This is Nate and this is the Nader Tater Channel. Right, so now we're going to do a speed test here and I want to make sure that we're still using the same T-Mobile Detroit um, server that we've always been using. All right, looks like it just popped over 400, 421. The other thing to see here is the ping is um, much lower. So finally got the ping down uh, even with the, the cabling. So now this is just 10 foot of cabling. It's not uh, additional, but now I'll see my upload is now 53. So these are much better scores with the Quad Pro versus the Quad Mini. And that's with the exact same spot, exact same cabling, exact same um, uh, setup and antenna order. So that shows you the difference between the Quad Mini and the Quad Pro. All right, hey everyone, let's compare these two 5G cellular antennas. This one is the Waveform Quad Pro, and this one here is the Waveform Quad Mini. So obviously this one is smaller, it's also cheaper. Starts at under $120 for the antenna. That's before my 5% discount. You can use code NaderTater on their website to get 5% off any of their stuff. So this uh, bigger one, the Quad Pro, it's about double the price. Um, as the quad mini you can also get these with a kit so what i'm going to show in this video is really a speed test comparison of what do you get for more money and what do you get with any of these antennas versus one of their stock gateways that for example t-mobile verizon at&t have for their 5g home internet services now i already did a unboxing video with details of all that this quad mini includes so i won't go through all that i'll put a link to that right up here above me that you can click on if you want to see more details about the desktop mount the pole mount setup the window suction cup mount setup as well as the specifics gains or performance that these have at least from a lab testing standpoint now for the quad pro one of the biggest things here that changes from it versus the other one is this flexible mount that they have. This is a new mount that has a couple um, adjustment angles on it with a um, Allen key. They actually include that Allen key and it's actually a nice one that has the, um, the kind of the pivot in on one side of it. So it gives you easy access to get into here and loosen these up. And that will allow you to rotate this up and down and left and right without having to reposition or move the pole mount that's attached on there. For the pole mount, it has two U-bolts that go through here. Uh, grabs the uh, the pole and then it um, tightens down with with included uh, hardware and this one obviously has a couple different angles that it can go at it can go um, with the pole uh, vertical or the pole horizontal and uh, and you can adjust that there and then also if you don't want to attach it to a pole mount you don't even have to you can screw this directly into a flat surface or you know depending on the position it could be even a, a horizontal surface that this could pivot down to and, and mount onto so a lot of options from a mounting standpoint i won't get into too much details with that for this one i'm really going to focus on the speed performance i get with putting this in the same location as the mini antenna all right but i do have to mention this game changer here this is a new product that waveform released that is the window entry cable this comes included in the kit you can also buy it uh, individually for example if you want to add it to your current setup and it just gives you four sma connectors on each end but it has this really thin ribbon cable that's like a silicone overmold that allows you to sneak this in through a window and then it has a double-sided sticky tape that you can attach or screw holes that you can um, securely fasten this to the inside and outside. So this is a great way to get the cable from inside your house to outside without having to go through a wall or ceiling. So that's a, a cool product that they came out with and is neat. The other thing I want to mention is I was really impressed actually when I got the, uh, the kit and it actually came with real hardware. This is not just the flat, like, you know, laser cut, you know, stamped sheet metal wrench or something. This is an actual uh, uh, wrench for your 17 mil for the uh, quad pro nuts for the U-bolt, as well as a 10 millimeter wrench, which quite frankly, you always lose the 10 millimeter. So this is great to have an extra one of these. And it even has a swivel socket on one end. So this is really great for attaching uh, the other fasteners uh, on the Quad Pro as well. And then you have this uh, Allen key that I talked about before for the adjustment of it. So these come included with every kit. So these are clearly kind of overkill from what I would expect in a kit, but just goes to show you that Waveform is kind of willing to go above and beyond 
to help make the install procedure that much easier. So I do appreciate that, that they do. All right, now for the testing, I used this G4AR gateway from T-Mobile, but this same setup, this antenna works for Verizon, it'll work for the other T-Mobile gateways, or even a third-party gateway like this one here is a Chester Cheetah router that I've reviewed many times, and those antennas just uh, screw directly into it. For these other gateways that don't have the external port, you do have to hook up uh, to the inside um, board with them, these little connectors. I have videos on how to take apart most of those gateways as well as Waveform has instructions on their site. But for this G4AR, as well as, as its sister uh, one, the G4SE, both of these have the um, SMA ports on the bottom side of it, and I have these little 90 degree adapters that I like to buy and add them for that. If you want those, I have a link in the description as well. But so for this testing, to try to keep it consistent, I used the same stock gateway again. I left the gateway in the same location, and when I installed the antennas, I kept them in the same location as well to try to make it as apples to apples comparison as I can. And that also includes me doing it back to back. So I did this within uh, you know, an hour or two hour window for all of the testing. And I also went back to retest the stock setup just to make sure I haven't um, drastically changed my speeds. So it's not perfect though. It is very hard to do this testing and be very accurate with it. But I um, went above and beyond this time by doing multiple runs, let's say like three or four runs, and then take an average of those runs to give me a line item. All right, so this is the third floor attic and we have the windows. Now the tower is actually behind the camera, so it's not out the windows, it's actually the other way around. But this is where I have uh, the G4AR setup. I just did a speed test. I write down all my metrics on my, my piece of paper uh, from the app as well as speedtest.net. I do a couple tests with it. And then I screwed in the antenna to the back side of it there. Uh, so the, those are just in order one, two, three, four. And I do have those little uh, adapters on it. But then up there, barely you can see it, is the quad mini up on the outside tower. So it goes through the window here and then there's a cable, it's a 10 foot cable that goes right up to that tower. So now I'll do a speed test in comparison with this one. And then we'll swap out that quad mini with the Quad Pro in the exact same location. Okay, so if we actually hop into the test results here, this one is the one I did with the Quad Mini and the stock gateway, so that was a previous video. And you can see I did have a nice change in um, performance there. But now if we switch over here to the Quad Pro, what you can see here is I get anywhere from uh, 250 down and seven megabits per second up to 481 down and 51 up. Those are my, my biggest numbers there. So diving into more details, again, this one is just the Gateway versus the Quad Mini on one of my past videos. And you can see that by having the uh, antenna right by the Gateway, I did get a improvement in the download, not a uh, change really in the upload though, but by putting the Quad Mini outside on the tower, which is outdoors and has a better line of sight uh, to the uh, cell tower. That one is where I got really my biggest change in performance. And I'll note that on different days, different times, I might get different performance. So you gotta be careful comparing this data to the new data that I just took. But this gives you an idea of my past experience of the Gateway and the Quad Mini. All right, so this is the internal antenna. You can see it says three bars. Uh, good, but I can scroll over and get to the antenna and change it to external now that I have the quad mini hooked up. And we can just see if uh, it shows any difference there. Now, at least right now, it now shows that it's external, but no change in signal. But that's where the bars really don't matter. we got to look at the metrics and most importantly, the speed that it gives us. All right, so now we have the um, new Quad Pro setup, and it's in the exact same spot as the um, Quad Mini was. Now, don't mind the, the cabling there, it's temporary because I gotta move it again for more testing. But if we look here back to the internal uh, antenna, and that's the good three uh, bars. So we'll go over now to the um, external antenna, and we'll add that. Okay, so now it said success. Now this one, it does actually show that we got a improvement in the um, signal on the bars. So it is three now. So if I look here at 
my uh, tablet and just get an update. We're still on B66, shows the um, external antenna. Now we can see the signal to noise for B66 has gone up to about 13. Our RSSI has gone up to uh, 85, so that's better. And now if we go over to the 5G, we can see we're still in 41. The um, RSRP is now minus 81. Signal to noise is now up to 24.1 or 24.3. Now most importantly, let's do a speed test. So now here, if we look at the stock gateway in kind of the yellow shading, the blue was the quad mini out on the tower with a 10 foot cable and then the quad pro out there on the tower. Now I'll get into why these are different, especially the quad pro one that has four different uh, data points there that uh, are kind of a range of different numbers, especially for the upload. So what we'll do is we'll kind of break this down into something that you can hopefully digest a little bit. To get the high level summary of the difference between the stock gateway and the quad pro, I took all of my runs that I did with the stock gateway. So it was probably like five, six or seven uh, runs that I did and I averaged them out with the stock unit. And that was about this 259 megabits per second down and 11 megabits per second up. This is up on the third floor of my house. So it's like almost the attic space or it's actually even with the attic from a height standpoint. And that's really a best case scenario for me. If I have this gateway down on the main floor of my house, I'd get maybe 150 down, 200 down, something like that. But I only get maybe two megabits per second upload. So it's really not usable. But by getting it higher up, I'm able to get that upload speed faster as well as the download speed faster. But just know that that is kind of a best case scenario. I put the gateway as high as I could and the best place I could get it. And these are my performance. Now, if I take the Quad Pro, and this one actually had even more runs to average. I did a lot more testing with it. This one averaged at 446 megabits per second down and 36 upload. So a drastic change there between the stock gateway and the pro gateway. But there are some nuances that I want to talk about so you understand a little bit better of what um, drives these changes and how you can make sure you get it or even know if you can get that kind of change at your house. Okay, so the other part about the performance is you want to talk about ping or latency. And this is important that a lot of people probably don't give enough credit when they're talking about how fast their internet feels. You can have blazing fast internet, but when you have a slow ping, especially even loaded ping, then you're going to be unhappy with the performance. You're not going to have good um, video uh, conferencing. You're not going to have good gaming. You're not going to have any of that stuff. Even though you have fast speed, you have poor latency. So in general here, you can see a little bit of a trend of the latency getting better with the Quad Pro versus stock. If we go to the next page, this um, explains it a little bit better, makes it a little bit clearer. This is taking the average of all those previous ones. So you can see roughly where it runs out. You can see very clearly on the download ping, it gets you know 30 plus percent better going to the Quad Pro. And then for the idle ping there in blue, it also gets significantly better. It looks like that's about 40% uh, better uh, ping with the Quad Pro. So this is the same gateway, but now it just has a antenna um, outside. And, but then if you look at the upload, it really did not improve at all. I would say it's the same performance, which is poor. And that's another note I wanna make about this stock gateway is I have always seen their loaded pings be pretty pathetic. Now, if I get on um, a really good signal, I can get good idle ping, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot to me if my loaded ping is poor. So I've noticed if I go to like something like the uh, Chester Cheetah, gateway or a pep link or some other uh, better hardware from a gateway standpoint, I can get my loaded pings coming way back down. In fact, I tested the Chester Cheetah with this setup and my loaded pings were in a couple hundred milliseconds. So, you know, four or five times faster uh, ping with the same setup and same SIM card. But all right, so if I go through one by one to show you what my testing was like, I started with the stock gateway internal antenna, third floor loft, and it was on band B66, at least what the, the app reports. I have my complaints with how the app only reports one LTE and one 5G when oftentimes it can do multiple bands, so carrier aggregation, but you can't get that information out of it. So if you just look across that top line, the set of number one there, you can see the signal metrics as well as on the further to the right, the download, the upload, and the pings. And again, this is running multiple tests and I took the average of them and the average is what is reported in this uh, chart here. 
So then next I hooked up the quad mini with a 10 foot cable, the window entry cable, and I had the quad mini outside on the tower and I tried to keep it on the same B66 N41 setup and I was successful. And you can see I did get a notable improvement in my download and my upload speed. And then took the quad mini off of the tower and I put the quad pro exactly where it was and hooked it up to the 10 foot cable, the window entry cable. And right there we saw a, another big step improvement of going up to 438 megabits per second and 51 megabits per second upload. So then I wanted to test out the stock gateway again and I just hooked it up real fast did a speed test and you can see I got 264 megabits per second down so about the same as I had for the first run but my upload did get cut in half so this is just some of the variation that you might see um, out there and it really depends on your signal as well as the time of day that you're out there and then my ping also got slower so um, that gives you an idea of maybe how much delta you can see with the exact same components um, switching them on and off and, and um, retesting them. So then I went back to the Quad Pro because I wanted to um, see how it did and you can see there that I got actually faster this time around with my download uh, but my upload did get slower but again my upload was just slower with the stock gateway too so maybe there was something going on there with the, uh, the network or the bands that it was connected to. So next I wanted to see how big of a difference the cable length makes. Whenever you have a cable or a connector, you have a signal loss there. So you want to have as short of a cable as you can get. And for all of that previous testing, I had the shortest setup I could get with a 10 foot cable and the three foot uh, pigtail that is on the uh, antenna itself, as well as the window entry cable. But then I wanted to add in 20 feet of extra cable just to test to see how bad that affected me. And that's where you see setup number six there with a 30 foot listed. And for that one, you can see I'm on B2 for the first time, which uh, is a challenge with the gateway. I could not get it to get off of B2, even when I unhooked the antenna. So I tested that one. You can see I got 427 down and 19 up. And so I said, okay, well, I can't get off of B2. So now I'm going to take the 20 foot extension out and go back to the 10 foot extend, um, cable. And that's that uh, setup number seven there, where you can see how my signal changes. And a lot of it is kind of nonsensical in that I actually had better signal to noise with the 30 foot cable than I had with a 10 foot cable. And then you can see that held true for both the 4G and the 5G. But as you would expect, my signal strength got worse with the 30 foot cable versus the 10 foot cable. So that one made sense, but in the end, my download speed actually ended up being pretty much, I would say the same between the two, but my upload did get cut pretty much in half with the longer cable. Some of that I think you can attribute to the longer cable. Some of it I would say is just variation, even though these are averages again, but that kind of makes sense because one of the biggest struggles with your upload is your signal from your gateway back to the tower and that's where your signal strength does have a big uh, play in it. Oftentimes, if you have something like, um, you know, in the less than minus 100 dB for your, um, for your signal strength from the tower, you're probably going to be okay from a download standpoint. It's really more of an issue of your upload getting back there. So if we look at ping, I would say, can't we really see anything different in ping? You know, actually the 30 foot cable averaged out to be quicker in ping than the, um, the, the shorter cable, but I, I think that's kind of a wash. So in the end, you know, the longer cable, it did hurt my upload speed. Everything else I would say is about a wash, about the same. So it's something to consider that uh, you do want to keep it as short as possible, but it's not really the end of the world if you do have to have a 30 foot cable or maybe even uh, slightly longer, but I would not encourage you to go uh, more than 40 feet with this um, kit. But if you wanted to go more than 30 feet, or especially more than 40 feet, then I would encourage you to reach out to Waveform and actually ask for a higher grade cable. It is more expensive, but if you really have to run the longer length, then that's what I would do because that's going to start to really uh, cut into your improvements if you go much longer than that. All right, hopefully that was educational. I'm sure you probably have some questions. If so, put them down below in the comments. And then if you're interested in getting any of the stuff, I have links in the description down below. And so also make sure you hit the like button for the video and consider subscribing to my channel if you really want to help support the channel and help it keep growing.